In this video, we are going to start to prove the central limit theorem, and we're going to do so using characteristic functions, because I believe that this is probably the simplest way that you can actually go about proving the central limit theorem. And again, this demonstrates the value which characteristic functions bring to the world of statistics. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves of what a characteristic function is. A characteristic function of some random variable y in terms of this parameter t is defined as being equal to the expected value of e to the i t y, which we can do quite easily using the law of the unconscious statistician as being equal to the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of e to the i t y times my sort of probability distribution function integrated all over all space. Okay, so that's just what we have before. But let's now think about this sort of term here, e to the i t y. And when we sort of think about this term, we're going to sort of uncover another sort of hidden property about characteristic functions, which I should note, opposed to other moment distributing functions, actually exist for all types of random variables. Okay, well, we can actually expand e to the i t y using a Maclaurin series or using a Taylor series as being equal to 1 plus i t y plus i t y all squared divided by 2 factorial and we could sort of continue on for higher order terms but I'm just going to note all of those by stuff of order t squared which means that essentially all of these other terms tend um, to zero if um, faster than the second term so faster than of order t squared as t goes to zero. Okay, so I can just sort of write this out a bit more simply as being equal to 1 plus i t y minus t squared over 2, because 2 factorial is just 2, times y squared plus stuff of order t squared. And if we were to substitute this sort of um, approximation to our exponent function into this integral up here, we would actually find that there's something interesting that comes out of it. Namely, that if I was to sort of write out my characteristic function in terms of t, this sort of first term here involving 1, well, it's just going to be what integral of from minus infinity to plus infinity of the function of y dy, which is just the integral over all of the probability density, which by definition for probabilities has to be equal to 1. So that's the sort of first term which comes from the 1 here. The second term is essentially the i and the t we just treat as sort of constant and we're just left with the integral of y times this probability density. Well the integral of y times this probability density is just the definition of the expected value of y. So we just get the expected value of y for the second term. And then for the sort of third term we're just left with t squared over 2 times, now we're just going to have the integral of from minus infinity to plus infinity of y squared times the probability distribution. And that's just defined as being equal to the expected value of y squared. So that's just the second moment of the distribution. And obviously I could sort of continue with all these sort of other terms, but I'm just going to denote them by stuff which is of order t squared. And when you sort of see the characteristic function written in this way, you can see why it's actually a moment generating function because it's sort of consecutive terms so this sort of expected value of y, expected value of y squared, and if you were to sort of continue, you get expected value of y cubed. These represent the moments of the distribution. And knowing the characteristic function means it's very easy to get these moments of the distribution. Essentially, if you were to just differentiate this characteristic function with respect to t, and then evaluate that at t equals zero, you would then find said moment, with whichever moment you were looking for, and that would correspond to the number of times you would have to differentiate this characteristic function. We're not going to talk about that further here because we don't really need it for our purposes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, let's say that the random variable y is distributed. Um, I'm not going to specify a particular distribution, only that it is a random variable with a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. And under those circumstances, we can write out the characteristic function for um, our variable y as being equal to 1 plus, well, this second term here is just going to disappear because the expected value of y is just 0. 
And then the sort of third term here is just going to stay. So we can sort of, it's actually going to be a minus for this third term. So it's going to be minus t squared over 2 times our expected value of y squared. Well, the expected value of y squared is just the variance because if the expected value of y is equal to 0, the expected value of y squared is defined as the variance. So our sort of third term actually just becomes t squared over 2 times 1. So we don't need to worry about the 1 there. And then finally, we've just got this sort of stuff here, which is of order t squared. Okay, so we're part of the way through to proving the central limit theorem. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and use this result to help us prove it. I'll see you then.